Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Um, <clears throat> behold, another HP that does not turn on. Um, I believe this thing has no power. I've not actually checked before I hit the record button, so let's find out if I'm about to not make a video or not. Right, when I plug in a charger, we have no light next to the charger. Should be there. So that looks like a no power to me. So I assume from that that if I press the power button, nothing will happen. And I would be correct. Alright, so it's stone dead. Ugh. And is the light on the charge start? It is, yeah. Although that's a Dell thing. I don't see many other brands where the light on the charger will go out. I think that's only a Dell thing. I could be wrong. It's always worth checking though. After you plug your charger in and uh, you don't get a response from the laptop, make sure that the charger is actually still on. Um, because if it's not, obviously you need to re-plug it. Uh, anyway, um, so uh, we've got no power into the laptop, so the first thing we need to do is start taking some covers off and get access to the motherboard so we can see how far the power is or is not getting. So uh, I'm going to take the top cover off of this. Let's go. Feels like I've missed a screw. Yeah, I'm gonna check that. I did, I checked. And I still didn't see it. There we go. So, in resistance mode, I'll put my black probe on ground on the DC jack and we'll check the red pins. And we have mega ohms, lots of ohms. Same over there. Yeah, that's really high actually. Like that's crazy high. I would expect it to be in the hundreds of thousands um, or even tens of thousands here. I mean, obviously, high resistance is not is the opposite of a short circuit, so that seems to be okay. But it's not normal. Let's now plug the power in and see if there's power getting there. So there's no power into the motherboard, but every now and then, the meter kind of flickers. See, it, just did, it did it just then. Um, so that looks like there's a short circuit, but there isn't. Um, I think I'll take the motherboard out and take a closer look. Where was our input? So our input is this top one here. I think I might have had a really bad connection on the other side of the board. No, look at that. There's the mega ohms again. But our main input MOSFET is at hacking three and a half ohms. Okay, let me show you a close up of this and I'll just show you what I think is going on here. So our power comes in on this pin and the pin under it. That's our 19 volts in. This is our TVS diode, our input protection diode. Um, so this guy absorbs transients. Um, so if we get a static shock uh, or we get a lightning spike or something like that, this guy will conduct back down to ground and this will explode, um, protecting the rest of the laptop. Well, it's not supposed to explode, but it will absorb transients and put them down to ground. Uh, it looks like our 19 volts comes in through here and we've got some input inductors, which is normal. And then those input inductors go into this MOSFET here, which is the first of our inrush limiter, which is a pair of MOSFETs. So we go through here, we go through here, we go to the TVS diode, then we go through this guy, and we go out onto the main power rail of the laptop. That is what I am seeing on this board. 
We don't have a short circuit here, but I think we've got a short circuit between these two. It's interesting that the TVS diode is in between them though. Normally I'd expect the TVS diode to be just straight across the DC jack. So I don't know if I'm I don't know if I'm looking at this board wrong or whether this board just has an odd design. Okay, so if we have low resistance going into our main power rail, which we should see on the output here again. So there's our two and a half ish, three ish ohms, that kind of area. So our main power rail is, uh, is, I say shorted, it's at very low resistance, but two and a half ohms isn't a dead short. We can't just go injecting power onto that. We need zero to inject power. Um, so the concern is, is that with that low resistance, we've got a short through our CPU or something similar. Uh, it won't be through our GPU because we don't have one of those. For the record, the GPU has a super low resistance of like at zero ohms uh, as well. So be careful with low resistances and stuff. It's difficult to explain on this example though because we don't have one of those present. In any case, there's an easy way to check. Luckily, we are blessed with a socketed CPU here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop out the memory modules and the CPU and see if that short circuit disappears. And if it does, it means we're shorted through the CPU. So let's quickly hoik that guy out. There's like no thermal paste on this thing. That's a bit strange. That's very concerning. Like there's literally, like there was literally nothing there. It looks like some old thermal paste has been cleaned from this before. I reckon this has been off before it got cleaned and they didn't put new stuff on or something like that. That's a shot in the dark, but either way, that's really not a good sign. That's not a thermal paste pattern that we want to see. All right, so going back to over here, our survey says something different. Let's just go to the same points that I was previously measuring at. All right, it's, no, it's the same. All right. So we're not, we're not shorted through the CPU because the CPU is now off the board. Um, we could be shorted through the PCH. Uh, that could be a thing. I wonder if we can narrow this down. See, again, as I say, the problem is that we can't inject power on this. Let's do some, let's do some quick napkin calculations here. So if we do some quick napkin maths here, uh, we need to look at Ohm's law. So when we're injecting power into the circuit, we are applying volts and amps into the board. And we're hoping that whatever has gone short circuit will then heat up. Now the problem is, if we have 2.5 ohms of resistance, that gets in our way. So current equals voltage divided by resistance. So if we're applying one volt into our voltage injection and we have 2.5 ohms of resistance, we're only going to get 400 milliamps, 0.4 amps, before we hit that one volt maximum. In, and that only equates to just under half a watt of power. And you're not going to heat anything up at that power level. So in order to actually get any kind of heat into the system, you've got to increase the voltage. You have to increase the push to force more current into the, uh, into the system. So we'd actually have to increase the voltage. I mean, if I quickly run it through the calculator again, if I wanted my three amps of current, we'd actually need seven and a half volts before we can actually get the amps up to three amps. So, and the problem with that is, yeah, we'd be injecting onto the main power rail, which is designed to take 19 volts from the charger. But the issue is, we don't know what is shorted. We don't know where that power is going. 
if a secondary power rail in the system is shorted. So for example, if we had a shorted CPU MOSFET, then all of the power that we're injecting could be going straight into the CPU. Now obviously that's not the case here because we've taken it out, but on a normal board. So if you increase your, volt your volts to 7.5 volts in order to get 3 amps into the system, you've just disintegrated your CPU core. So we can't just increase the voltage until we get the, amp the desired amps. Uh, so therefore, we can't functionally inject power here. We need to actually figure out what's happening. So let's put a pin in that and let's follow the board along this area here first. So we know we've got power coming in through here, going along up to here. And then at this point, you can see we've got some vias going through to the other side of the board. We've also got the battery connector here and we've got a big inductor here. So there's probably something going on at this point. Let's flip the board over. And we can see that those vias are coming out there and going into this MOSFET. So, and from this MOSFET, we've also got some inductors and there is also a current sense resistor here coming back onto this rail. So where do those guys go? Those guys line up with these vias here and these don't go anywhere. So these are going into a, uh, a middle layer of the board. Quite likely the main power rail is in one of the uh, middle layers of the board now and disappears somewhere else inside the laptop. Probably goes all the way up to more to other areas of the laptop, possibly around here where CPU uh, power is going on. We'll get over there in a moment. However, this guy here, this is going to be to do with the battery power and charge circuit. So let's start having a look here. Let's take some measurements and see if we can determine anything. So firstly, does our short circuit exist here? It should do. It does. We're actually lower there. We're down to sort of 1.3 ohms. That's interesting. What about the other side of that MOSFET? Okay, we're up into the thousands of ohms here. So this MOSFET is solid. This, is in the, this MOSFET is off at the moment and it's cutting off power. So our short circuit doesn't pass through here and then go to the battery. So there's nothing going on there. Uh, so we can determine that there's no one at fault in this area. It's almost certainly not the battery charger. Um, we've got some capacitors and stuff going on here. Let's just take a real close look at those and just see if we can spot any anomalies. To be honest, if this was a bad capacitor, I'd expect to be seeing zero ohms. I don't think this is going to be a capacitor. I'm looking for MOSFETs or something like that with these symptoms. Uh, those guys look a little bit spotty in the center, but man, it's really hard to tell. Every time you're looking at capacitors, you know, like it, when you find the bad one, people will look at that and go, oh, that's got a crack on it or it looks failed. And it's just like, I don't know, do those look failed to you guys? Like the middle one looks a little bit spotty and the one on the left doesn't. Could be, who knows. Let's look for other stuff first. So if we travel up here, there's another big MOSFET stage here. What's this guy doing? This is going from power to ground because there's a screw hole there. So what is in this area? What's on the other side of the board? So that comes up to there. So this is gonna be memory V core because that, that inductor is going up into the memory channel. So that's clearly going to be our memory power. So once again, let's see if anything is happening there. So we'll go ground to... Uh, there's a better ground. Let's check ground to there. Resistance. And I think this might be a dual MOSFET package, actually. So I'm just going to check that pin up there as well. And yeah, there's resistance there. It's not particularly high. We're in the hundreds, not the thousands of ohms. However, it's not our short circuit, which is the important thing. Okay, let's move across. So over here, we've got CPU V core. So these are the high side and low side MOSFETs for our two-phase CPU V core. 
and on the other side of the board you can see we've got the big inductors for those. So this area is highly suspicious. Um, we definitely want to be looking at all of these guys to see if we can spot anything. So let's start with the MOSFETs. So we can figure out which are the highs and which are the lows because we've got a screw hole here which is going to be ground. So this plane is ground and you can see it comes around to here and goes on to this MOSFET and it goes on to this MOSFET. So the outer ones are our low side MOSFETs that switch to ground. So the inner ones are the high side MOSFETs that switch 19 volts down to one-ish volts for the CPU. So again, let's check for the presence of our short circuit. So we'll check the inputs to those. And there's our short circuit at 1.2 ohms. We're getting lower. I almost feel like we're actually triangulating closer and closer to an actual short circuit here. And that's a thing you can do. You can actually use your multimeter and you can probe around and you can you can do some basic triangulation to narrow down where the resistance gets lower and lower and make a rough estimate as to where the short circuit is. However, generally speaking, you need a reasonably accurate multimeter to do that. And that's not what I've got here. Don't get me wrong, I like this multimeter. It's a great um, basics uh, repair one, but it's not accurate enough for triangulation and stuff like that. But you can see that we're getting lower. So what about the other side? These are outputs. We shouldn't see the same voltage, the same resistance there. What do we get? High resistance. So that building you can see there, that is where we are charging output capacitors. So this means that neither, neither of these high side MOSFETs are shorted because we have high resistance. They're blocking uh, the power at the moment. So our issue is not inside of CPU vCore. And that also means it, our CPU is probably okay uh, because there was no short circuit into the CPU. Very well. So what is this stuff here? This is directly... This is the underside of the CPU. So this is probably output resistance. So what's going on here is we're going through the high sides, then the inductors are here and here on the other side of the board. So we're going through the high sides, through the inductors, and then we've got a bunch of capacitance here. And then we go up into the CPU itself. So these guys should all be at high resistance and we'll just double check that. Normally, all of this bit would appear to be shorted to ground because the CPU itself is very low resistance. However, because we've, we've got a socketed CPU that we have removed, we're seeing high resistance because we're up against all of those capacitors. So that's completely normal. No problems at all there. Let's flip the board back over again. Let's look at some of our input capacitance over here. Uh, what have we got? We've got, it looks like we've got another TVS diode there. That's interesting. So uh, we've got the ground plane all around here and this is all input. So we should find this is shorted. Yeah, one ohm. So this is all going to be shorted as well. One ohm. One ohm. Um... I'm tempted to try and inject because one ohm is not a short. I'm looking for less than an ohm, but it might just be low enough that we can see something with the thermal camera. And like we've got the important stuff like the CPU removed already. And the other thing to consider is the only thing left on the board that's kind of vulnerable is the PCH. But the thing is, if the PCH is shorted, then we've already lost. So we've at, we're at the stage now where we may as well just inject power and if this guy heats up, then we had already lost. We're not going to kill it anymore. If it's already shorted, we've already lost. So I think we should do that. So I'll take the heat sink off of that PCH just so if it does start heating up, I'll know sooner rather than later. And Normally I solder on somewhere near the power input, but I'm going to put my jumper wires down here around CPU vCore just simply because that's where we saw lower resistance. 
So I want to try and get in where we saw the lower resistance to try and increase my chances of actually finding our issue. Because back up here where we were seeing like two and a half ohms, this might be too far away. I don't know what that means. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know if this is going to be successful or not. So call this a test, really. There might be some people that are just going to, in the comments, who are looking at this going, you've got too much resistance. That's not going to work. And if that's the case, then I guess we'll find out. However, sometimes you've got to actually just try something out and see if it works. As long as, of course, as I say, you've taken, you've taken reasonable measures to assume that you're not going to do further damage. There we go. Put that big old jumper wire on. So we now have two jumper wires with a short circuit between them of about one ohm. So a little bit higher than I want, but I think that's low enough. I'm, I'm trusting in the magic of the thermal camera now. Let's find out. Right, here we go. Let's see if anything happens. We might have to turn the board over for this one because a lot of the power stuff is on the other side of the board. So, um, as you can see, we've got a cold board at the moment. I'm just keeping my hand to one side just to keep the calibration intact. So, nothing going on anywhere. So, let's turn on the power at 1 volts, 3 amps. So, we've immediately gone to 1 volt and 1.3 amps. And let's just see if anything... I've forgotten to turn on my on-screen reporting. Is that something there? Got two possible hotspots here. This area here and that area down there. Anything else? PCH is doing nothing, so that's good. These little hot spots here you're seeing, that's reflections, because those are shiny components, so they're just reflecting stuff from elsewhere. Yeah, there's definitely stuff going on on there. Let's flip the board, and actually, I'll just see if those are actually hot. And that, I think, is actually that. Could be everything. What about that guy down there? Flipping the board. There is a big old flare up here. We don't have enough... There's not enough heat to actually find anything though. That looks like just that dot, but... You would almost imagine that's a reflection, but there's nothing there to reflect, so there must be something happening. I'm going to risk 2 volts on that. Alright, so we're now at 3 amps and 1.5 volts. Uh, so two volts set, and we are up to. Oh, yeah, it's that cap. Right, let's turn that off because we found it. I'll show you what I found. It's very difficult to show you this on camera because I'm sort of going oh, 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 with this in a very befuddled British manner. Um, so, right, let me show you what just flared up there. So what we saw was this guy here going nuclear. So let's just check the resistance in that area. We've got one ohm there. And yeah, there we go. If I press into that with below an ohm. And... <clears throat> 1.3 there. So I'm guessing that's the hot... Yeah, that's probably the um, power side. And this side was ground, which is why we went super low. So I think this guy might be in a partial short. It's not dead short. Let's just measure directly across it. Really press those probes in. It's not dead short, but it's low enough to be a fault. I mean, there's only one way to find out. Let's take it off the board. So here comes the hot air. All right, and with that guy removed, we're now up to high resistance. So that is our fault gone. I wonder if we can figure out what that is now. 
So where are we looking here? Where are we? This was the battery um, MOSFET. And we were short along here. We had that current sense resistor there. And this is going into the board. And there were the vias that go through. And these, I was theorizing, were going through into the inner layers to go off somewhere else in the board. So this is the main power rail. And it looks like it's providing probably some feedback. This is this chip here is probably our power management IC. So there's probably some power going around here and there's there's probably some feedback to here so this chip can monitor the state of the power rails. That's my guess without you know looking at the schematics. We could look this up. That's BQ738 and that's a TI instruments. So TI BQ738, I'm fairly certain that's a power management chip. Um, and you know, like it's right here. It's got um, it's got some uh, diodes near it. We've got a current sensor resistor here. That's almost certainly the power management chip. So it's all in the right area for that. And this is just bypassing. Um, so yeah, there's there's nothing particularly special here. It's just another dead capacitor. This one was just a bit weird because we weren't seeing really low resistance. But the other thing to remember is. This could be me getting caught out by um, low quality probing because we've got an older laptop here. I mean, not crazy old, but you know, we've got an aging laptop that's probably got a layer of grot on the board. And I know that the probes on my multimeter aren't very good. Um, so maybe we were just getting rough probing. Okay, so failing that, what is this thing? It's about, it's the same size as those other caps. So we can make a reasonable assumption that it's the same value as well. Um, however, as usual, just to make things easy, I'm going to check if I have a schematic for this because I do have a decent stash of them. Uh, so this is a DAOR33MB6E0 Rev E to be precise. And Shazam, we have a schematic. And we also have full silk screen on this on this board. So we removed PC104. So PC104 doesn't exist. Oh, it's, it does. There we go. Uh, where? I really need to get Adobe Reader installed on this again. There we go. It's this guy down here. Right, and this is part of the three volt regulator, apparently. Sure thing, you got it. Maybe I was wrong about that MOSFET. It doesn't actually matter though. Oh, it's near to, yeah, oh no, it's near to a couple of MOSFETs. That's probably the three volt reg. Oh well, anyway, it's a two point. Well, that's odd. That's 2.2 nanofarads, 2200p. So P is picofarad. So 2200 picofarads is 2.2 nanofarad, 50 volt. Are we sure? I have the big doubts that a 2.2 nanofarad is that big. It's a shame this particular schematic doesn't show the size of the capacitors. I'm going to stare real close at that a sec. You know, I think that's EC15. So I saw PC-104 there. However, I think PC-104 is actually this guy here. Um, however, if we read down, we've got PQ-30, which is the MOSFET, PC-126, EC-16, EC-17, PC-124, EC-15, EC-15. So actually, I think we're on EC-15. Let's go back to the schematic. EC-15... Uh, now we're on the battery charger. That's more like it. That's where I thought we were, the battery charger. And we've got a 10 microfarad, 25 volt capacitor. That sounds more realistic. So U is micro, so 10 microfarad. And as you can see, EC17, 16, 15, and 12 are all 10 microfarad capacitors. So as usual, the ones that are the same size probably the same value. If you've got a schematic, it's really nice to be able to check. However, in a push, 
If it's the same size, it's probably the same value. Let's grab a 10 microfarad capacitor. Right, we'll just touch up those pads with some fresh solder. Put a squidge of flux on it and just give it the beans with the hot air. Here's my replacement capacitor, which is from my capacitor kit. If you eBay search for um, 0806 capacitor kit, you can buy a bag of various capacitors like I have that has all kinds of different values in it. However, if you want better bang for buck, um, just going for some typical values like um, 10 microfarad, 1 microfarad, 100 nanofarad, and so on. They're basically the, the 10 denominations. Those are kind of the common ones you see a lot, but as I say, I just bought a variety pack and that had everything in it, so. Hot air back in. We're at 450 degrees C and I'm at four out of 10 for the airflow. Lovely. Right, I shall remove my mod wires now. I'll take those off while the board cools down. And now if we go all the way back to the beginning and just measure that inrush limiter, as you can now see, we have high resistance on the main power rail, 1.4 mega ohms. So our problem is solved, our capacitor is replaced. Let's reassemble this laptop and it should turn on and run. So it's another just basic capacitor replacement. Um, I actually thought this one was gonna be a bit more serious because of that low resistance. But in a way, that's also a valuable lesson, as much to me as to anyone else, that don't panic if you see like one or three ohms of resistance, because as soon as I saw that one or three ohms of resistance, immediately I was like, oh, that's the CPU, we're dead in the water. Um, however, it might not be. And you know, like again, we saw that CPU with no thermal paste on. Um, now. For the record, I know I always say it's never the CPU. That generally applies to desktops. Just be aware of that. Laptops, completely different ball game. It absolutely can be the CPU with laptops. That's very much a thing. Um, however, in this instance, it wasn't the CPU. That high resistance, I don't know why we were seeing like one ohms across the laptop. I think I just had bad probing. Um, who knows though? I do need to investigate I do need to invest in some nice probes for my multimeter so I can do some experimenting there and just find out how much of an issue my cheap probes are actually causing me. I know for a fact that my probes have got like half an ohm of resistance in them alone. And when you're trying to measure very low resistances, that's quite a lot, I think. But I don't know. Do the more fancy probes give you significantly lower? I don't know. I should probably fork out for some. The problem is, um, good probes, they're not expensive, but it's probably going to cost me 30, 30, maybe 40 pounds for a really nice set of probes, minimum. And that's not a huge amount of money, but when I'm trying to sell to you guys the idea that you can get started with a 20 quid multimeter, saying, oh yeah, you now need to go and spend 40 quid on probes, kind of diminishes the value of that. So again, while you can get started with cheap um, uh, cheap tools. This might be a very, very valid lesson in showing you what the limitations of cheap tools are. Because while I would absolutely contend that you can use cheap tools, I would never say that cheap tools are as good as expensive tools. And perhaps that's what the moral of this video is. It's showing you how on this particular repair, we are at the limits of my probes there, and it was almost causing a problem. That much being said, if you recall, I did have to go to 1.5 ohms, uh, 
I did have to go to 1.5 volts on the voltage injection to get up to the 3 amps that I wanted for voltage injection. So, I don't know. I try to come up with a, uh, a moral of the story for videos. What What is the takeaway of this video? What am I trying to teach in this video? And sometimes there's not always any real resolution other than what you saw. It was another dead capacitor. We replaced it. It's like what we often do in these videos. But maybe just seeing lots of different... I, I think the trick to learning this is sometimes just seeing lots of different examples. So you, you see the different ways in which the board might be behaving and the different ways in which it might be presenting itself. I have often said when people say they've got 1.5 ohms of resistance, that's not a short. However, it kind of is. I don't know. It's about 10 to closing time, and I don't know if I've got the energy to finish this job before close, so I think I'm just going to see this thing turn on so I can walk home knowing that this is fixed, and I shall do the reassembly in the morning because I'm plum tuckered out. Charger in. We have a light on the charger. Power on. We have fan spin. We have a power light. And we have display. CMOS reset. I should think so because I disconnected the battery. Good. Uh, wonderful. I forgot to put the USB port back in. Remember to look on your desk to see... Not whether you've put everything in, but what is left on the desk afterwards. If you've still got bits on your desk, then you forgot something. No matter. I'm going to wrap up the video. Uh, this is clearly fixed. Uh, any other small bits, I'm going to fix off camera, like fan, SSD, that kind of thing. Uh, need to talk to the client about that. But in any case, uh, we actually got the thing to start and run again. Uh, this laptop, it's kind of clunky, but also... This thing would clean up real nice. It's got an i5 in it. Yeah, it's an old i5, but it's still an i5. That's still usable. You could put an SS you could put a cheap SSD in this, a new fan, um, and give it a wipe down, you know, get all this dust off and all the rest of it. Uh, and this would be a good user experience. Maybe a bit of extra memory as well. But you know, you could probably do all of this for like if you were DIYing, you could probably do all of this for less than a hundred pounds, you know. Um, but yeah, in any case, um, hope you guys found that interesting. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, as always, my support links are in the description below. Patreon, Discord, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye for now.